Hello everybody, this is Gregory with The Cinema Rag. I hope you're doing well today. Today we're going to talk about the messed up life of Melanie Griffith. Now before we begin, if you appreciate my content, please subscribe and hit the notification bell if you haven't done so already, and post a comment because many of you may have some sort of connection to this actress. Now Melanie Griffith is currently 66 years old. For you younger people, you probably don't know who she is, or maybe you know that she was married to Antonio Banderas, otherwise known as Zorro to a lot of the younger people. But the majority of her, her fame and her, 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 I guess her best movies or most famous movies would have been in the late 80s, early 90s. And the reason I, I want to talk about her messed up life is because like a lot of Nepo babies and children who grew up in Hollywood, she had a messed up life. Now, she is the daughter of Tippi Hedren, who is famous probably for being in Hitchcock movies. And her parents divorced when she was two years old. And um, she had an interesting life. So... She started dating Don Johnson when Don Johnson was 22 and she was 14. And, you know, again, this this is the time of, of the 70s when uh, Roman Polanski's allegedly uh, having sexual relations with a 14-year-old in a hot tub. This is one of the reasons why that fame director can never come back to the United States. We've also seen reports of of uh, musicians like David Bowie, Steven Tyler, they were doing things with underage girls. So I, 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 and I definitely want to condone this behavior and also remember that the 70s were just a different time. But either way, th today, no doubt, this would be perceived to be an inappropriate relationship with Don Johnson, probably most famous for Miami Vice, um, was uh, dating or whatever with a 14-year-old girl. Either way, this was the 70s. And so later on, they got married and they were married when she was like 18 years old for a few months and then they 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 got divorced to be continued. Then she got with Ryan O'Neill. Ryan O'Neill, probably most famous for Love Story. Uh, this is the father, Tatum O'Neill. He just recently died that long ago. And he was a good, I don't know, 15 years older than Melanie Griffith. So again, you know, very young girl. She's in her 18, 19, 20 years old. He's in his 30s. Her, uh, I'm just sorry, Ryan O'Neill's daughter, Tatum O'Neill, probably most famous for being married to the tennis player John McEnroe and being in some some classic movies like Bad News Bears. She wrote an autobiography and said that uh, it was not uncommon that Melanie was asked to be in orgies with Ryan O'Neill, her, her dad, uh, uh, back at this period of time. And so you can kind of see this milieu or this environment that Melanie Griffith is in in her early wilder years. So. Uh, eventually, she's dating Ryan O'Neill, and then uh, once her career starts picking up, um, she starts dating Stephen Bauer. To me, Stephen Bauer is 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 most guys would probably remember Bauer as being uh, Al Pacino's best friend in Scarface, the one that he kills because uh, he realizes that he's having sex with his sister. Uh, but Capasa USA, that, that that sitcom was so iconic for me as a kid because as a Hispanic, it was one of the few. Uh, Hispanic shows. Anyways, he was from there before he got into Scarface. So she's with Stephen Bauer. They have a kid together in the mid 80s. So Melanie Griffith ends up having three kids from three different men. I have an episode of two famous actresses who had three kids from three different men. At the time of that recording, I did not know Melanie Griffith belonged to this list. So too bad I can't go back and do three well-known actresses. But she's had three kids from three different men. One of these, these kids, of course, is, is pretty famous. So later on, she's doing Bonfire the Vanities. She's doing something wild. I mean, these movies are pretty good. She's doing a Body Double, great uh, movie by, uh, um, oh my God, uh, Brian De Palma, who probably is most famous for like The Untouchables and, and later on he and, and Scarface, of course. A good movie. Uh, but, you know, the, the thing about Griffith, and this is more about her personal life, I've never thought Melanie Griffith is a good actress. Even when she got her Oscar a nomination for Working Girl. That's the great Sigourney Weaver, uh, Harrison Ford. Man, if you want to know like 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 a time capsule into the late 80s fashion and late 80s technology, go watch Working Girls. I, I don't like Working Girl that much of a movie, uh, but it really gives you an idea how bad the fashion was in the late 80s when I was like 14 years old when this movie came out. The thing about Melanie Griffith is that like she could be in the Emperor Has No Clothes playlist that I have here, but I think her personal life is far more interesting. But she kind of plays the dim way that it talks like this in all of her movies. She doesn't really have a lot of range. She kind of plays when she was younger, kind of like the blonde bombshell. And yes, you know, there's movies where she shows off a little more of her range. But as a whole, if you go through her filmography, it's just 
a lot of that really high pitched, annoying voice. And it's one of these things like, what are people seeing that I don't see aside from the fact that when she was younger, I guess you could say she was attractive. I personally, granted, I was you know pretty young and it, it, during her peak, but you know, I'm, I'm adolescent boy. I just never found her attractive. So eventually her relationship with Bauer ends and then she reunites uh, with Don Johnson and they remarry. Remember, they were married for a few months back when she was like 18. And they, they were dating, of course, when she was younger than that. They got together. Um, they were doing some movies together. And from there, they conceived Dakota Johnson. Now, the, interestingly, if you look at the dates, they were married uh, in, I, I can't remember what year it was. I want to say it's like 19, maybe 1997. I can't remember the exact dates. But Dakota is born three months later. So clearly uh, they were uh, doing the you-know-what. She conceived, they found out she was pregnant. And they're like, oh, let's get married. So Dakota Johnson conceived out of wedlock. Nowadays, not a big deal, right? Back in the day, we call her a bastardess. Uh, but nowadays, you know, illegitimacy rates are around 50% in America and in certain communities in America, it's 80%. So in, in Europe, of course, it's not that big of a deal. Um, so Dakota Johnson's her second child uh, from Don Johnson. Then later on, she meets Tony Flaggs, otherwise known as Antonio Banderas. And it's interesting, at the time, they were both married. So I was thinking of putting this playlist, and maybe I'll put this episode in the playlist, Cheating Scandals, because at the time, they were both married. And... Tony Flaggs talks about it. So they met in a movie called Too Much. And I guess the sparks flew because at the time he was married to an actress by the name of Anna Lenz and she was still married to Don Johnson. And so this is what he said. I'll try to do it on my, my sexy put some boots voice. We tried as much as we could to be respectful. We just thought this may be one of those, you know, infatuation moments that we have when we shoot movies because we got to play together a couple. So let's just go home. Well, apparently not. So they got together and uh, eventually uh, they divorced each other's respective spouses and Griffin then got with him and they were married for 14 years and they had a child together. And then of course, full circle, Tony Flaggs eventually does what? Because he is Antonio Banderas and he is smooth as silk. One of my favorite skits from, from SNL was with Chris Kattan. He used to do the Antonio Banderas show. This is like 2002 where, I mean, he, of course he looks nothing like Antonio Banderas, but he would un unbutton his shirt and he would invite different female guests like Jennifer Love Hewitt was a guest once and he would try to seduce them. It's such a, it's such a funny skit. But Antonio Banderas, of course, 14 years later, has what? Has an affair behind Melanie Griffith's back. Now, this is in 2014. At this point, she's in her 50s, Tony Flags. Of course, you know, sexy man, he can get a much younger woman. So he ends up having an affair with a woman that he's actually still with, Nicole Kempel. So again, you marry a guy who demonstrates that he will cheat with you. What makes you think that he won't cheat on you later on? This is why you never marry your mistress, right? So 2014, they divorce and he moves on with a younger actress to tell his all this time, of course. And uh, that's the story of Melanie Griffith. Now, in terms of her film work, I, 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 I think her best works, as I mentioned, were like in the late 80s, early 90s. And I don't really think we need to go through her ove. I personally just, like I mentioned, don't think she's a good actress. And, you know, you look at her, she's one of those also cautionary tales that we kind of talked about in the D Dakota Johnson, uh, Sexy Saturday, in that she's just, you know, plastic surgery. And I get it. Look, I, I think her whole life, her, her, she perceived herself or her value to be from her beauty, right? This is very common in Hollywood for female actresses. And so as she was getting older and the roles weren't coming like she was getting uh, earlier on, it's not uncommon for women in their 40s and 50s to start getting a lot of plastic surgery, especially when Antonio Banderas at the time was younger than her and she wants to keep him. But many times the plastic surgery actually makes you look worse. So she gets plastic surgery, she gets the tattoos, and then you look at her now, I mean, the, the, again, plastic surgery doesn't catch up to you. It always catches up to you and reminds me of another Saturday Night Live skit when Amy Poehler was on the show. There was a, they did a commercial for like, uh, some sort of roll on that will burn off your tattoo. And I remember the episode, like, you think when this tattoo, when you're young, this tattoo on, on your back looks great. But with this time elapsed, you can see what happens to this eagle and it turns into like a sagging thing on your butt. And, and that's what happened. So you look at her, I, th I think it's a cautionary tale of Melanie Griffith and that, you know, when, when your whole value comes from, from your beauty and your sexuality and it's not really based on your talent, 
uh, eventually you're going to get passed on and, and it's tough. And I think also if you look at her, just her childhood environment, um, I would say would, would be classified as pretty dysfunctional um, and that she was sexualized at a very young age. And I think this kind of played a role into her just having a lot of relationships, not to mention, and I'm glad I remember this, but she had, not surprisingly, because this is many times connected, she had a, a hard drug and alcohol problem uh, through the 80s and 90s. She was in rehab quite a bit, and so she struggled with that. So a lot of train wreck stuff, and today I wish her the best. And I mentioned the Dakota Johnson episode. Dakota Johnson's in her mid-30s, and I mentioned her in, in, the, in the episode five women who don't have kids yet who need to have kids now you know there is some uh, some uh some hollywood blood in dakota johnson and she needs to start having kids so we can have four generations of hollywood beauties in this family either way post in the comments let me know what you think of melanie griffith until next time take care god bless and pray